We do have Castle Vantress to use on our end step here to make sure. Oh, I guess we already know that we have Narset though. <clears throat> All right, we go up to six here. So next turn we will die unless we can pull a Shatter here. Big money, big money, big money. If you wish to surrender now, meditate and prepare. Even, even, even. Okie dokie. Hey. Welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Today, we are playing Magic the Gathering Arena, Esper Lockout. This is a pretty exciting deck that I brew up last night after I finished my chores. And I'm trying to make nine lives semi-competitive. Now, I asked the group chat what they thought about it, and a lot of people are like, you know what, that's trash. Ugin minus, you're just giving up the free game. So, you know what, I get that. And there's a few other things that really deal with nine lives, especially well. Uh, Flood of Tears is a great example. Uh, Doom Foretold, things like this, right? The sacrifice effects of permanence will get you. Uh, the bouncing of all permanents, non-targeted, will get you because it has Pax Proof. And then, uh, well, people said the aggro matches as well. Um, and then the Ugin Minus ability. So there's a few things uh, that we've thought of. If you think of any more, link them in the description below. What deals with nine lives very efficiently? So we're going to break down the deck and how we make nine lives competitive. As always, we're going to go through the deck list in its entirety, right? This is an Esper uh, control deck. And then we're going to break down uh, the strategy and synergy within the deck. How do all of these cards form to work uh, to make a comprehensive and coherent archetype that works, right? And then uh, we're going to get into today's gameplay footage, take a look at all of our different play lines and... Um, interactions within the meta uh, how does our deck work with the rest of the decks in the game and then finally we come full circle with my final thoughts um alternative build paths deck upgrades um suggestions plans for the rest of the week uh community news all of that kind of fun stuff right so don't forget to watch to the end and if you find any value within this video hit me up with a thumbs up and share it out to a friend with all that out of the way let's get into esper lockout in core set 2021, revolving around nine lives. We have two copies of Thought Erasure. This is a sorcery for two. We have two copies of it. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Surveil one. You know what? I really wish I had four copies in this uh, of this in there, but I'm just not sure how to fit it in there. On to our three draws, which we have a ton of. Two copies of nine lives. This is an enchantment with hexproof. If a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage, put an incarnation counter on nine lives, and when there are nine or more incarnation counters on nine lives, exile it. When nine lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Three copies of Narset Parter Veils. This is a legendary planeswalker coming in with five loyalty. A static ability of each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. Minus two. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them, put it into your hand, and then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Two copies of Cry of the Carnarium, a sorcery. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Exile all creature cards in all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. And if a creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Four copies of Necromantia. This is a sorcery. Choose a card name other than a basic land card name. Choose, or sorry, search target opponent's graveyard hand library for any number of cards with the name and then exile them. That player shuffles their library and then creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token for each card exiled from their hand this way. Four copies of Teferi Time Raveler, another legendary planeswalker coming in with four loyalty, static ability of each opponent can cast spells only any time they could cast a sorcery, plus one ability until your next turn, you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. And minus three, return up to one target artifact, creature, or enchantment to its owner's hand. Draw a card. Two copies of Kaya Orzhov Usurper. Another Planeswalker coming in with three loyalty. No static ability here, but she is still legendary. Plus one, exile the top two cards. Uh, sorry, exile up to two cards from a single graveyard. You gain two life for uh, if at least one creature was exiled this way. Minus one, exile target non-land permanent with converted mana cost one or less. And minus five. Kaya Orzhov Usurper deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that that player owns in exile, and you gain that much life, so that's actually quite neat. One copy of Ashiok Dream Renderer. This is another legendary planeswalker coming in with five. He does have a static ability. Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library, which is quite nice, actually. 
and then a minus one ability target player mills four cards from their library and then uh exile each opponent's graveyard which is very nice that has huge synergies within the deck which we'll get to in just a minute Ooh, my apologies <laughs> four copies of shatter the sky this card will destroy all creatures on the battlefield and then for each person who controls a creature with power four or greater uh they're gonna get to draw a card two copies of teferi master of time another legendary planeswalker with only three loyalty when he comes in however he does have a static ability which states you may activate loyalty abilities of teferi master of time on any player's turn and anytime you could cast an instant that means on your turns as well as on their turns plus one draw a card then discard a card minus three target creature you don't control phases out Treat it and anything attached to it as though it doesn't exist in its controller's next turn. Enter the battlefield effects will not re-trigger. Minus 10, take two extra turns after this one. Three copies of Extinction Event, Sorcery. Choose odd or even. Excel each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value. Onto our five drops, two copies of Ashiok, Nightmare Muse. Another legendary planeswalker coming in with five loyalty. Plus one, create a two, three blue and black nightmare creature token with whenever this creature attacks or blocks, each opponent exiles the top two cards of their library. Minus three, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, then that player exiles a card from their hand. Minus seven, you may cast up to three spells from among face-up cards your opponent owned from exile without paying their mana cost. Face-up means you're able to see what they are. Shark Typhoon, this is a single copy, a six drop. An enchantment, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost cycling, is for 2 plus X, and when you cycle Shark Typhoon, create an XX blue shark creature token that has flying. We also have a single copy of Ugin the Spirit Dragon, simply because why not? A legendary planeswalker with 7 loyalty, plus 2, deal 3 damage to any target, minus X, exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less, that's 1 or more colors, and minus 10, you gain 7 life, draw 7 cards, then put up to 7 permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield, which is pretty insane. These spells are accompanied by single planes, Castle Vantress, 1 Island, 1 Swamp, 4 Hallowed Fountains, 4 Temple of Enlightenments, 4 Godless Shrines, 4 Temple of Silences, and 4 Watery Graves. There's no sideboard, we're playing best of one today. So that's the deck list. Let's begin to break down some of these strategies and synergies within Esper Lockout in Corset 2021. Now, I mentioned earlier that this deck revolves around nine lives. A few points while playing this deck that I want to bring up for you guys. Nine lives does not need to be dropped onto the battlefield until right before you're about to lose the game. You have available mana and 14 life. Don't drop it unless your opponent has lethal next turn. That's going to be uh, our first and foremost rule because we can use our life points as a barrier and then or a buffer zone, right? And then when we get low, we play nine lives and now they basically have to attack us nine more times or deal damage with nine separate permanents. Uh, keep in mind, Cavalcade of Calamity uh, will trigger multiple times, so that's really disgusting, right? It's all about the instances of damage, not how much damage. So there are certain trigger effects uh, that will deal a lot of damage. Some of the death effects or sacrifice effects within Jund are quite disgusting as well uh, and can really ruin your day which is why it's important to let your opponent eat your health points get your field wipes out and then you play nine lives later on in the game once you've started to mitigate uh, their hand value their creature field uh, presence all of that great stuff right so drop nine lives later on and then we talked about the things that directly deal with nine lives a lot of tears ugin Doom Foretold, to name a few. This is why we have Necromantia. We can search our opponent's library, hand, graveyard, and just take those cards right into exile, which is really nice. About 80% of the meta is Ugin, so that's our first and foremost pick, right? About 0% of the meta is Flood of Tears. I don't think we'll ever see that, but it does exist as an option. We also have Doom Foretold, which is sprinkled within the meta. It is rare, but does exist. So, what's really nice about this? We can go in blind, even if we don't hit it. Now we know we're safe. We know Nine Lives is totally viable. He can't deal with it. All he needs to do is deal damage to get it off the field. In which case, we have all of the creature mitigation through field removals. Cry of the Carnarium, that wipes the whole field. Shatter the Sky wipes the whole field. Extinction Event wipes the whole field. And then we have smaller things 
like Kai is minus one to get rid of uh, the little baddies. Teferi will bounce things as well, right? Ugin's plus can deal three damage to something as well. And then we also have Ashiok's minus three can bounce it. Teferi's minus three can bounce it. And Teferi, uh, big Teferi's minus three can uh, phase it out, right? So there's lots of ways to survive the damage that they're outputting while we draw and try to find our field wipes to deal with his creatures, right? Um, again, we can make chump blockers to accomplish the effect of us surviving as well while we're trying to draw those field wipes. Ashiox Plus, Shark Typhoon, Static Ability, right? Those will make the chump blockers, which will help us survive. Thought Erasure is a really great opening play. We get to see what kind of deck our opponent is playing, and then that just helps us form our game plan for the rest of the match. So there's no surprises, right? Um, and a lot of the times it will keep us from uh, trying to necro something that's not in his deck. So Thought Erasure, take his second highest priority, right? And then you know what deck he's playing, and then you can use your necro to take the highest priority within the deck he's playing. So that's a very uh, oppressive move that you can do right there. That's basically the general strategy to survive, destroy your opponent's board state and his hand state, and then you play your nine lives, you necroed the things that will deal with it, and then you're good to go. You can straight up chill, you can assemble all of your super friends, right? Get all of the pieces to Exodius formed, um, and then just smash your opponent. There's so many easy ways to do it. One of the uh, easiest though is Kaya's minus five because of all of the exile within the deck. Elspeth Conquered's Death exiles, Ashiok exiles, Kaya exiles, Necro exiles, Cry of the Carnarium exiles, right? Um, Extinction Event exiles. There is a lot of exile effects, even Ugin exiles as well. Um, if you can somehow get around uh, exiling your own creatures, we, we normally don't do the minus X unless we absolutely have to. So you can see just how much exile synergy there is within the deck. And this is just really cool because you can uh, you can exile the cats, called them familiars. You can exile Uros and Kroxas, right? Um, there's lots of stuff that's really cool to get out of the graveyard and then out of play uh, just to make the rest of the match that much less stressful. So I think that's the general strategy. Um, you can also use discard effects like Surveil, um, like Teferi's Draw Discard to put high priority targets such as your Ugin, such as your Ashiok into the graveyard and then you can re-pull them out with Elspeth Conquers Death. So uh, that's pretty cool for everybody as well, right? So there's a, a lot of really cool plays and then Nars that just helps us dig uh, for what are, whatever we may need, whether it's a Planeswalker and Elspeth Conquers Death or a Field Wipe, uh, even part of our combo pieces, right? Nine Lives and Necro. So. That's the entire deck list. That's the whole strategy, you guys. I think it's actually one of the most basic Esper decks that I've built uh, while still re remaining competitive. We are uh, we're winning games in Mythic with it, which I always love um, just crushing it, right? Uh, while going after the big bad Ugin, just strictly hunting him. That's what it's all about. Uh, we are 100% hunting Ugin today. Um, a couple great matches for you guys, so I know you're gonna enjoy today's gameplay footage. Don't forget to watch to the end so you don't miss out on all of our wrap-up thoughts. And I really appreciate all your continued time and attention. Your support does not go unnoticed, you guys. Thank you so much uh, with the power of my whole heart, right? Um, and those of you supporting the channel financially even more so. So take care and we will see you same time, same place tomorrow, which is every day, 6 a.m. Uh, Mountain Standard on Twitch and then 7 a.m. Mountain Standard uh, no, sorry, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard on Twitch and 6 a.m. Mountain Standard on uh, YouTube. So we go on YouTube live first, then we're on Twitch, and we're in the Discord for the rest of the day. Links for everything in the description below. You guys, don't miss out. Have a great day. Our opponent goes first. That's fine. We have our Thought Razor. We have our Necro. Let's find our nine lives. Let's take this Ugin and get out of here. It's not Ugin, though. It's... Be Selesnia aggro, right? Conclave is in there that we need to get. Let's just take a, a bird's eye view and take priority cards here. I don't think there's an Ugin. Chatter doesn't hit us. This stroke is really annoying. So let's take the stroke. 
because it's a cheap counter. The land can stay. That takes us to five for Ashiok. Land can go. Let's take ECD here. Only two copies of it. He's got oh, he does have Ugin? The one time we're like, oh, this guy doesn't have Ugin. That there's copies of Ugin. I see one infallible, one non-Ugin. Uh, Spirit Dragon. Then he's got the Giant. Planar Cleansing. That's what we need to take. So this is never gonna work. We basically know that we can't play 9 lives within the rest of this match. Just because we did uh, choose the wrong card there off the start. We are so lucky here. It sucks because we need a third one. Ugin is better though. And maybe when we take it, he's like, fine, screw you. And just the one copy. And let's take our little scry here. We've got our event to clean the field. Grave can go. Our hope is that he quits the match or uses his planar cleansing. So we need to build up our field, have him drain his planar cleansing, and then use our nine lives. Kill these tokens. He drains his mana for another, that's fine. Hopefully he goes to gain life here. Ashiok on the field, and when we minus on this token that he's made, it makes him discard, because the token can't go back to his hand. So we're eating his hand away. I'm guessing Shatter goes. To revitalize. Okay. Surrender every morsel of fear. Birth of Maltese, whatever. So we've really got our backs against the wall here, and we need to make the most out of this. <laughs> that draw engine's really annoying me. Let's Typhoon it out. This did kill us last game, uh, accidentally, but it'll be okay here. The shadows awaken. Again, we're just trying to draw out that single copy of Planar Cleansing he has in his library. Um... If we could replay the Necros from our graveyard somehow, that would be very neat as well. He's in a weird situation, right? We're exiling. And hopefully we can get the Planar Cleansing that way. That would be really helpful as well. Okay, so we're going to try to get it with our Ashiok here. Oh, that's not good. All your fears are given form. 
get that shark in play. Nice. Uh, I do want to have him exile from his library, so we're attacking anyways. Even though the defend is fine. Okay, giant comes out, lights the field. Let's take the draw, sure, why not? Let's keep Shatter, it's better than Extinction Event. <laughs> Are you serious? Creeping, thieving brush. Just cycling through our deck. Shark Town. I heard you had some dead things that needed Taking to stay his dead. Library, which there is not much of because he just shuffled it all back in, right? Unsummons our nightmare fine. I'm gone for now, but not forever. We're sitting at 40. He's down to 33 already. Oh, man. I guess we have to toss Ashiok here. Plus Teferi again. Throw the land. Play Narset, please. More sharks. Mind and body should move. More nightmares. Like wind and wave. My kin are delightfully friendly. I hope you said you I won't. Keep that graveyard empty. And take that draw. Hone your prowess. The one shark can swing in for three as it has flying. Probably doesn't want to shatter here. Whew. Nice. So we'll have to phase out this giant here. Because it doesn't wipe itself. Very good play. Hmm. Yeah, let's keep it alive. Take that plus. I don't think Cry will do us any good here. Narset can go for a dig. Put thoughtfulness before action. Well, I do like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're a few away. Uh, that's for sure. How many in exile? 12? Wow. You are getting close to being in risky territory, my friend. You're not welcome here anymore. Um. Yeah. Go ahead. Here you go. Okay, so here's the copy of Planar Cleansing we wanted. We can now plus up. And we probably want to drop our Kaya. So we just need to get this Planar... Oh, we should have kept Kaya to get the cleansing out of the graveyard. That's my bad. That's my bad. One, two, three, four, five, six. This would be seven. This isn't a fight you can win. 
Don't worry, I got this. Let's just go right on top. I can no longer stand by and watch. I've got time. Okay, the Ashok will eat planar cleansing. And then we can continue with our plan. Okay, takes the draw, that's really nice. There we go, there's our nine lives. Teferi goes up. Stop on our opponent's attack phase. Can we one, two, three, four? Yeah, we can do both. Let's take his planar cleansing out. Oh, we get the other Ugin as well. Very delicious. Uh, we're going to stop here and turn. There's our instant speed shatter. Barfinder, what does that even do? Nothing with Ashiok on the field. <laughs> um, I really want to nine lives him. But he knows it's over. He knows we got Ugin in the house. So, sometimes we don't get to have fun with the jank. We just get to win. Typically, this would be a good hand. We have Kaya because it's going to be Uro. Thought Erasure for early game interaction. Ashiok for further Uros, but the land. Taking an Esper hand with two land has got to be the riskiest thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. So, I don't even know. Yeah, like, that's not a land, right? Oh, no. We really need to pull land. Land, land, land. There it is. That helps. It definitely helps. We need a fourth land as well. At least a blue source for our Narset. We will be able to cry, which is a good sign here with Paradise Root on the field. Ooh, 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 it's not a good sign with that. Let's just toss it back up. Let's slow this Protection from black, that's not helpful. Uh, we do get our secondary blue source for our Narset, which is good. Looking for a Shatter the Sky to deal with this Harbinger. Or even uh, an ECD and Elspeth Conquers really Death would be uh, opportunistic. Ow! Let's thought erasure. We do get to surveil here. Whoa! 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 I like to ferry. Uh, we got no play for two, so let's just leave the to ferry there. It's a big hit. I'm not a proud man. We should have tossed to ferry. We are just going to play our ECD on this Harbinger. Let's see what he gets. Let's see what he gets. Varkai Troll, that is good. That is good. Let's just keep it slow. Let's right play it. Cool, we're chill as a cucumber, boys. Where is that shatter? <laughs> we want it. We want a shatter. He's got evens and odds. Um, more evens than odds. Uh, the Harbinger's the only odd. So he's got to tap the Druid if he wants to attack me.
We might just drop our Narset for Sacrifice and dig. Oh, nice. That needs to be dealt with. It's got Hexproof though, potentially. This is hardly That's annoying. Worst defeat. Come on, Shatter. Oh, perfect. We're hitting all evens here. Uh, it does not count, bro. But he knows. He, he wanted it to work, but it doesn't. That should really help us out. He's down to five, going to six here. It's the Harbinger. We can ECD it. And that's where the game begins to get fun for us. Hmm. Let's just take his end race. We know he's got it. Let's be efficient. What else does he have in here? So he's got some mutates. He does have sterixes. Okay. Our next target would have been the Sterix, and um, people just do not like you going after their deck, it appears today. Alright, let's try this again. Our opponent goes first here, which again is a disadvantage for ourselves. We have nine lives. Remember, Ugin doesn't hit until later on. So we have a couple turns of freedom. A little bit of wiggle room. Mono green. Oh. Right back into it. So we're definitely still looking for Ugin. We need our Kaya to take out Uro. Really? A lot of people I see running uh, Lanamore Visionary today. Um, just an incredibly interesting thing for me to see. So let's just keep pushing. Right, we'll try to eat a little bit of his ramp here. Stand by and watch. Both no, uh, the Visionary and the Paradise Druid tap for land. So we put him back to five instead of six. Back to his Druid. Another Druid. Private Carnarium would be great. Shatter would be good. Narset digs for it. But we'd have to pay life. I think it's worth the uh, the bet. Getting Shatter is an important Those facet to our victory here. I have just the trick for this. Huh. Well, there's our combo. He's got a lot of land. He could play Ugin before we can take it. He knows we are going to take it. Nar sits down. Harder. I'm sure he has counter spells available, which makes me incredibly sad. It's a mutate deck. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, do we take Sterix instead? No, he's still gonna be running. I'm known for my excellent timing. Don't worry, I got this. Take the scry here. Shatter the skies become very relevant in the mutate deck. I'm wondering if we just take his Sterix. Like normally we know Ugin's what we're going for because it's the only thing that gets our nine lives. But we might just want to go for Sterix. I don't know. We we 100% know he has Sterix. We only 90% know that he is Ugin, <laughs> right? So, hmm, a little weird, a little weird. We do need our Shatter because he has Hexproof now. 
So I say we still take Ugin and try to deal with the mutate with our shatters and uh, extinction Who's events that? and stuff like this. Let's clean it up. Castle Vantress is very good. Normally I'm not one to scry land to the top, however, the long game value of Castle Vantress is incredible and we're just trying to lock our opponent out and go long game. Woo! That's a big Hydra boy! <laughs> 14, 15. Two drop dodges a lot of our stuff. Let's play our nine lives. That protects us from the Hydra. Let's play our Necro. And we're taking Ugin. Ramp through, Great Horn. Oh, none in his library, so we totally whiff. I don't see any Sterixes either. Gem Razors. Oh, he's got the Elder Gargoth. That's a nice card. Arrow is still in there. Nice. Plays it as the creature for the scry. I would have adapted it, or uh, mutated it for the draw instead. We know he has gem razors, which really, really suck. Let's play Teferi just because he can plus immediately and then still minus right. if we need to. Who's ready for a good time? Great horn on great horn. Very cool. Lots of ramp, lots of draw. I wouldn't mind a Narset to stop some of this draw. But he'll both attack Teferi here. Really? He's gonna leave Teferi alive. We can cycle a Shark Typhoon for two, probably not. Take the draw. Get rid of the Scry land, I guess. This leaves us with three land, we could push to four. Uh, auto pay works. Yep. Please land for Kaya. Pay life here. Play our Kaya. Make a shark. Uh, none like of these are one or less, which is a bummer. I didn't say fair. So we plus from his graveyard. Taking his great horn and his visionary, I suppose. Grabbing a little bit of life. Well, I won't good for you. Shuffling me off my mortal coil. Ramp through his instant, he'll just kill our shark here. So we're at two counters on nine lives. Kind of top decking, which is a little bit annoying here. The fairy uh, does get to plus here, so we may as well just take it. We're not minusing. I'm gonna keep Ugin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we should have counted our land first, but we still do have enough. Both planeswalkers are gone. 
I've learned my Keep in mind, we're going to make an 8-8 eight, eight shark here. Oh, but we're going to need it, that's for sure. We can't wipe them, which is a bit of a bummer. Kills our Shark Typhoon as well, which is going to help us kill his Watcher. Oh no! And we've backed ourselves into a corner. <laughs> oh no. Where's the shatter when you need it, eh boys? We're getting rid of his Hydra and his Season of Growth here. Losing our Ugin this turn. Looking for that Shatter still. We only have two counters on nine lives, so a couple turns to go, and we did get rid of his draw engine finally. My research has concluded. Worst case scenario, this guy's gotta go to his job and he leaves. Holy Billy, 30-31. <laughs> Doesn't matter how big it is. Narsite will dig for Shatter quite nicely. <laughs> oh, shoot. I didn't realize it was uh, our priority. We do have Castle Vantress to use on our end step here to make sure... Oh, I guess we already know that we have Narset, though. <clears throat> Alright, we go up to 6 here. So, next turn we will die unless we can pull a Shatter here. Big money, big money, big money! If you wish to surrender now, meditate and prepare. Even. 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 Okie dokie! Got him! Woo! Thank you, Narset. Mwah! Okay, he gets another draw engine out. That's annoying, man! This Narset is huge for us. Ashiok will eat his draw engine. Please and thank you. Got him! He has to discard that now. We have an ECD in hand. And it feels like we may have stabilized. We're going to Castle Vantress, uh, save our ECD. Casting ECD on nothing now is still net positive value, and that is game! Woohoo! We didn't find an Ugin, but we still managed to squeeze out a win in Mythic with this Esper Lockout deck. If only we got to go first. We've not been rewarded with going first at all today, I don't think. We want this Thought Erasure into a Necro without having to play our Teferi. Oh, that's the wrong land! Oops. That was supposed to be a Hallowed Fountain. Just snap casting. Don't worry about it. Watch me play Uro here. I guess it could be worse. His own Teferi, which would have been awesome Trust. to take. You'll thank me later. Shit. Let's try this. Should we just go big? Risk it for the biscuit? We came here to do one thing. We've been winning games. Oh, <laughs> I need to get rid of that fucking Nissa though. Extinction event becomes a very high priority. 
ECD is also one of our first and foremost targets to find. I'll protect you. Hopefully he whiffed on land. <sighs> yes, 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 we get ECD. Oh, he can uh, uh, veto this. Well, I'd rather him veto the Thought Razor than the ECD, right? Let's take this guy. Kaya deals with Uro. He doesn't have it in his hand. Let's keep digging. No land. Oh, he got it. The great thing about Nissa land is they dodge Ugin's minus X, right? They are colorless permanents, even though they're clearly colored. Let's blast them. Keep that Krasis uh, down to size next turn. Looking for an extinction event no, that we can hit for even. Pick out these tokens or else we're going to die. A nine lives will help as well, right? A little bit of uh, sustainability. Big money, big money, big money. Field wipe, nine lives. Something like this. Cry kind of works. I know my responsibility. I've got time. Kaya can minus on the token. I can get you beat me this time. Bravo. Down to six. He has Planeswalkers on the field still, with a Hydroid Krasis coming at us. Yikes. We ECD triggers, we've got nothing to pull. That's a bummer. That is a bummer. So it's dead ECD. This sucks. Try this. We can gain some life here, I believe. Oof. Obviously, let's take his Teferi. No life gains, no creatures. I'm gonna make myself One, two, three, four, five, six. His Teferi can phase it out, and the other one can bounce it. So we need his Teferi to use his plus ability before he goes to attack. Right? This is one of the best decks in the meta, so the fact that we're able to even still be here <laughs> this far into the match is incredible. So he did take the draw ability before his attack phase, which was what we were relying on. A wink. Uh, Teferi's just gonna plus, which is fine. Shark Typhoon is really neat in the fact that it can cycle through uh, Teferi board state. Okay, and ECD is quite annoying. He's taking Arkaya. Place his girl spiral. Sure, 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 sure. Land. Recycling that for four.
We trade with his Krasis. He's down to two cards, ladies and gentlemen. Temple of Silence for the Scry. Let's just see what we can get. We need some ECDs. Oh -hoo! Ask and ye shall receive. Do we have eight? One, two, three, four, oh, five, you. six, seven. We're awfully close. What's his ECD bring back? Nothing. <laughs> uh, Teferi's getting close to mine. It's ten, though, is the thing. Oh. Oh. And our turn. Our opponent is down to 33. We are at 43. He's been drawing a little bit. <laughs> oh, look at that. Earl in play. My favorite card to see. We are in an odd st oh, ooh, 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 these are going to be more expensive. And he bounces his ECD. Don't worry. I got this. Which is really quite good, actually. I hope he uses it on our Teferi here. That would be ideal. Yeah, okay. So typically, we would ECD his ECD, really and that's the best move you can make. However, unless we can minus X on everything here with our Teferi, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it doesn't look like it because this emblem stays. Uh, right? Plus, he plays Uro, so his threat is spread to the point now that we're unable to deal with everything. Right? And it's that ECD that saved him. Even if we put our Elspeth Conquer's Death to the bottom and pull the land, that's only 9. So the plus 2 comes in absolutely clutch. Let's take our castle, just see what's under the Elspeth. If he has an Ugin, he wins, right? Because minus X slays us. But if not, he gets two extra turns. I think I just have to take Uro. Here's a constructive use of time. He gets his turns. Let's see what he can do with them. I didn't want to play Nine Lives in case he's got an Ugin because that's what this deck goes for. And we haven't dealt with it yet. We haven't necroed it out of his of his library, so. We're straight chilling. Again, this is way deeper into a match than we would ever go good game so he just gets to play the crisis and then straight up it hit us with it so in this scenario i guess we would have been better off to risk the nine lives and we could have survived the damage output but again without having already taken his ugin from his library with our necro we're just a sitting duck and i think probably would have been dead either way nonetheless uh, a great match Esper Lockout. Oh, ho, ho. I think this is really good, and I'm going to continue to work with this deck and form it into, uh, I think, a semi-competitive best-of-one archetype. There's just not enough things that deal with nine lives, uh, to my knowledge, and the things that do deal with it, I think, are easily deal with... Uh, we can easily deal with them. We're not even running Unmoored Ego, um, just because it gives them a draw. I would rather give them a zombie that we wipe than help them replenish their hand, right? But if you couldn't find your Necro and you needed more uh, cards to exile the Ugins, then Unmoored Ego uh, is your boy. I would also like more Thought Erasures. So we're gonna continue to work with the list, fine tune it. Uh, so stay tuned, make sure to hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on anything. 
Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share to a friend, all that shenanigans. We're live on YouTube every morning, 6 a.m. Mountain Standard. Then at 7, we go live on Twitch. And then we're in the Discord for the remainder of the day. Link for everything is in the description below, you guys. Uh, we do have Esper Walkers coming out for you guys tomorrow. That's one of my most popular videos. So don't miss out on the Corset 2021 reboot of Best of One Esper Walkers. It's going to be a lot of fun. And it is the secret deck that the pros are using to climb rank without telling anyone. So uh, I'm about to take the lid off this secret and blow it wide open for you guys. So stay tuned. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.